Hi, my name is Chris Bain. I'm a pediatric urologist at the University of Florida. Um, I was honored uh, to be asked to give a talk at the um, Societies for Pediatric Urology annual meeting in May of 2022 in New Orleans. It was a 10 minute talk, so it's a bit rushed, but it was a 10 minute talk on um, consequences of cryptorchidism. And my 10 minutes was on timing of orchid epoxy. And I wanted to record it here on YouTube for uh, future medical students and, and residents because I think it's you know, very relevant. And um, I did a lot of uh, work to try to pack the topic into 10 minutes. So I'm gonna present it here. Um, and once again, thank you to the SPU for the opportunity to give the talk. Um, and just for anybody listening, I have no disclosures uh, with any of this presentation. Um, first, for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to talk about the timing of referral and repair for unilateral cryptorchidism. Um, we'll briefly touch on early and current cryptorchidism guidelines with mention of data for spontaneous descent. Um, we'll cover referral trends, touch on secondary ascent, and examine factors impacting late referral. And I'll end with surgical outcomes related to the timing of orchid epoxy. Um, first, the guidelines. The AAP's 1975 recommendation for genital surgery uh, between four to six years was due to physiologic and technical factors at the time. By 1996, the desire to minimize psychological trauma and separation anxiety to the child dropped the recommendation age for surgery down to at or near 12 months. Now, since the 2000s, there have been a wealth of information and research regarding cryptorchidism and the impact on fertility and malignancy that has impacted the last three major guidelines. Um, in particular, the AUA guideline recommends providers refer patients with unilateral cryptorchidism to a surgical specialist if spontaneous descent does not occur by six months of life, surgery should occur between six and 12 months. Um, there is ample evidence for the period of spontaneous descent. And in 1993, Berkowitz et al. followed nearly 7,000 babies born in the NICU in Mount Sinai. Um, and they followed these babies uh, um, over time. And the rate of cryptorchidism at birth was 3.7%. This decreased to 1% at three months, but was static at 1.1% at one year of age. The Michigan group looked at cryptorchidism referrals to their clinic over a 10 year span. Uh, patients were placed in one of two groups based on their age at time of referral and examined again prior to orchid epoxy. Roughly 15% of patients presenting before six months of age showed spontaneous descent on preoperative evaluation. None of the children who presented after six months showed spontaneous descent and all required orchid epoxy. Uh, moving to literature reporting trends, it's important to highlight literature on timing sometimes focuses on age of referral and other literature focuses on time of surgery. Um, first here, I want to focus on time of surgery. Steckler et al. published a multi-center review reporting that between 1991 and 1993, the mean age of a child undergoing orchid epoxy was 4.2 years. Uh, Korkowetsky and colleagues presented a FIS database review and reported that of children undergoing orchid epoxy between 1999 and 2008, only 57% were at or less than two years of age. Um, internationally, the trends haven't appeared much better. And in New Zealand and Australia between 1997 and 2006, 36% and 52% of children undergoing orchid epoxy were older than five years with no appreciable change over the 10 year span. In Jerusalem, between 2003 and 2013, 36% of children undergoing orchid epoxy were older than two years. And again, there was no appreciable change over the, the time span studied. Wei et al. reviewed um, over 3,700 orchid epoxies performed at their institution in China over a 22-year period. Here, we can see the median age per year with the salmon-colored boxes illustrating targeted age for orchid epoxy according to the guidelines at the time. The authors reported a statistically significant downward trend of age at orchid epoxy, though at the last year reported, 2014, the median age of orchid epoxy was still 24 months. Uh, referral timing is a rate limiting step, and so let's look at the referral trends. Snodgrass and colleagues published a single institution review of 118 cases referred to Children's Medical Center Dallas during a portion of 2009. The median age at referral was 43.3 months. Dr. Perez Brayfield's group in Puerto Rico reported an improved median referral time at 24 months during a slightly overlapping time period. And in Portland, Oregon, in a modern time period after the publication of all modern guidelines, the median age of referral was still 44 months. 
I'd like to dive into this last paper from authors at OHSU because what they did was unique. They prospectively reviewed and referred, excuse me, they prospectively reviewed all referrals for cryptocritism to Dornbecker Children's Hospital in Portland from March 2017 to August 2018. Of the 178 children who eventually underwent orchidopexy, the median age of referral was 44 months. Um, 61% had an abnormal birth exam. In the vast majority of cases, a genital urinary exam was performed at the next visit and parents recalled this exam. On multivariate analysis, there were factors associated with a delay in undescended testy referral until after 18 months of age. And these factors, or I should say notably, some of these elements would suggest that previous clinicians had in fact verified descended testes at the time um, of their examination. Indeed, the authors concluded that up to 39% of boys may have experienced secondary ascent uh, in this study. And when they excluded these patients, the median age of referral was still 24 months and over half of patients were seen for the first time after 18 months of age. So I think the, the, the big question is if we're going to try to improve referral rates or referral trends rather, we have to try to study these trends objectively. And, and that means confronting two questions. Um, first, is secondary ascent a confounding factor in existing literature? I think the answer is yes. In 2008, the Albany Group reviewed 177 boys older than four years who underwent orchidopexy from 1997 to 2006. They performed in-depth retrospective reviews to determine the reason for delay in referral to a specialist. 45% uh, were classified as having an ascending testis. And if you look at the figure on the right of the screen, the authors reported a peak in incidence of ascending testis in the peripubertal years of seven to 12 years. The second question, excuse me, the second question we need to confront in order to objectively study and improve referrals and thus orchidopexy timing is what forces are driving referrals from primary care. Perhaps surprisingly, an urban versus, um, an urban versus rural setting may not be a substantial factor, at least in this study by Point et al, in which mean age of referral of surgery was not substantially different between Baltimore, Maryland and Morgantown, West Virginia. The same West Virginia group attempted to evaluate referrals before and after a targeted education program. They gave eight total um, grand rounds on orchidopex referral best practices at surrounding hospitals. Um, a major pediatric, um, excuse me, major pediatrician groups within the catchment region, as well as a state AAP conference. And then they evaluated referral trends for three years after the targeted education. So I'm sorry, this is skipping along here. Sadly, the authors reported no difference in mean age at referral across academic, private, pediatric, or family medicine groups. And as a matter of fact, in most instances, the age at time of referral increased after education. The authors concluded uh, that in addition to more regular education, they ought to have focused educational efforts towards advanced practice providers as they often provide substantial primary care in the state of West Virginia. And this transitions us to another study um, performed at the University of Minnesota. These authors sent a short survey, of 500, a short survey to 500 referring providers in, in their department or to their department rather. And they compared this to a similar survey they had sent seven years earlier. Uh, the questionnaires were designed to assess referral patterns for cryptocritism and how respondents educate themselves regarding the guidelines. For medicine, med peds, and pediatric referring providers, the percentage of those who would refer patients with a unilateral, undescended, but palpable testis in the correct time frame decreased between 2010 in 2017. And in both 2010 and 2017 surveys, respondents reported their residency training was a primary source of knowledge on when to refer boys with an undescended testis. In 2017, online resources and discussions with pediatric urologists were also noted to be primary sources. So in my last minute here, I just want to touch briefly on surgical outcomes and specifically does delay have an immediate impact on the testis and post-operative atrophy? Colin et al. explored this in a thorough randomized study of boys recruited from Stockholm, Sweden hospitals. At six months of age, more than 200 boys were randomized to surgery at nine months or three years. 
The authors examined ultrasound measurements of the testes at fixed intervals, as well as hand measurements of the testes and wedge biopsies of the testes at the time of orchidopexy. Testes undergoing orchidopexy at nine months were significantly larger in volume, had larger cord diameters, more Sertoli cells, and more germ cells than testes brought down at three years. These distinctions held for bilateral undescended testes that underwent repair at nine months versus three years, with the testes brought down at nine months showing um, favorable parameters. So finally, there are two studies that nicely suggest no difference in atrophy between the testes brought down at less than one year of age versus an older age. Um, the first study I have listed here is a multicenter trial from the UK, and the second is a systematic review and meta-analysis that detects no difference in atrophy or complications in children undergoing orchidopexy before and after one year of age. So in conclusion, uh, modern guidelines leave six and at most 12 months between the age of recommended referral and the timing of incision for orchidopexy. And this means we need to get kids to our offices sooner. Number two, secondary ascent is likely a confounding factor in the literature and future research needs to account for this. Number three, educational efforts are probably best directed at primary care providers, and this includes advanced practice providers during their training. And number four, there are good data that early orchidopexy preserves testis volume, architecture, and histology. Obviously, there's very good data that um, early orchidopexy um, preserves um, fertility and minimizes malignancy, but that's outside the scope of this talk. So just finally, I wanted to wrap up by acknowledging a PGY4 resident at the University of Florida who let me mentor him through a paper on this very topic um, at the onset of the pandemic when we were trying to figure out how to um, triage these patients and whether or not we were going to operate uh, quickly or whether we were going to delay their surgery. Thank you so much. I um, hope you found it useful.